Uh, Kyle will take us on a tour of Magit. Kyle is a core maintainer of Magit and has been a data lab developer until around 2021. He currently works as a senior data science engineer for the Metrum Research Group. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, right, uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, I had the pleasure of, of working, uh, contributing to Data Lad for a few years, uh, working with Yarek, Michael, uh, Adina, Benjamin, and others. Um, it's, been, it's been great to be here, uh, to hear about um, all, the, all the tools um, and, and users that are, are, are uh, sorry, Anyway, to hear about everything going on with, with Git Annex and Data Lab, uh, it's been great. Um, so, uh, this talk is not about Git Annex, it's not about Data Lab, uh, it's just about Git and really just one interface um, to Git. Uh, that interface is named Magit. Um, it's built on top of Emacs. Um, many of you know what Emacs is. For those you who don't, uh, it's a text editor, it's old, it's odd, it takes some getting used to. Um, in addition to being extremely customizable um, and arguably a wonderful editor, it is, um, it's a really powerful environment for uh, building text-based tools um, and, and that's what Magit is. Okay, so before getting in uh, to what Magit looks like, uh, let me acknowledge two key people behind it. It was created in 2008 by Marius Falmer. Um, since then, over 300 people have contributed uh, at least one commit to the repo. Um, but uh, Jonas Bernoulli, in particular, uh, has put in an enormous amount of work uh, making um, Magit what it is today. Um, and of course, you know, commit counts are just capturing a very small slice um, of the amount of work he does maintaining Magit, um, and not to mention uh, lots of other Emacs packages. Okay, um, so Magit. So this is not Magit. This is Emacs. Let me first orient you to uh, sort of the um, layout here. So we have just this kind of big window here. Um, that's Emacs. Um, this window. Uh, down here in the right, um, that's um, just going to be kind of logging my key presses. Not too important to pay attention to, but maybe a helpful reference. Uh, I then also will occasionally um, uh, just pop to this regular terminal. Hopefully that's uh, legible enough um, uh, to run some git uh, commands for comparison. Uh, okay, so the entry point for Magit is typically um, Magit status. By default, that's bound to C. Uh, sorry, control X, G, so that will pop up a, um, a status buffer. This shows you a lot of stuff you'd expect to see with git status. It you know, tells you what the uh, current branch is, what the upstream is, uh, nearest tag, gives you a list of some of the most recent commits. Um, right? uh, there's a, a section indicator here. What that's saying is that you know, it's a collapsible section with content, so I can do things like you know, hit tab and display it. Um, so anyways, this is just a, an overview uh, buffer. And then a key concept with Magit is that um, nearly everything at point is actionable. So I'm hitting N to kind of move down different sections. If I get to a commit I want to show, I hit return on it, and I'm popped to a buffer uh, showing uh, information uh, about um, the commit. Um, and let's say, then I, I can kind of navigate uh, the commit. I can visit a f the blob for a file by pressing enter. Again, everything at point is actionable. Uh, I could jump to the file in the working tree with control J. Um, right, so that's the revision buffer. Um, then you also want to typically invoke uh, commands directly, of course. Um, so Magit exposes those through menus referred to as transients. So let's say I want to create a log. I'll hit L uh, to pull up the log transient. Uh, you'll see at the top here, there's just various git log options that should look fairly familiar. Um, 
down at the bottom, there's a set of actions. Uh, these are just different variants of the command. So log the current branch, log local branches. Others an interesting one because that one's just give me a revision range like you would get log on the command line. So it's flexible. You can pretty much um, get it to do most invocations of git log. Um, so let's say I want to look at, um, well, actually, before saying that, let's say I wonder about what one of these commands do, what's related. I can hit question mark, I can hit U, and I'm popped to a, a buffer saying, okay, this is what the underlying command does. Um, so once you're done reading that and you're happy with that, you can hit Q and it pops you back to the transient. Uh, if you're like, oh, I don't remember what some of these switches do, I need more information in terms of the git log options, you can question mark, question mark, and you're popped into a man page for git log. Again, once you're done with that, hit Q and you're back to the transient. So, okay, I want to log commits by Adina. She's all I care about in this project. I hit enter, um, and then uh, I can get for the, the um, to see the current log, I press L. And then I pop to a, a um, what looks, you know, pretty standard git log graph uh, one line. I can move up and down, same keys. Um, I could visit the commit by pressing enter. Um, but in, in the log, it's usually better to press space. I display it, and the nice thing is then that revision buffer will just track um, what's in the log buffer. Uh, so this is a, a, this is a nice view presentation-wise because it, it gives you the kind of high-level overview of a one log, but then you can jump into the details uh, very easily. If, you, if you're on a commit like this one that you know, spans way too much, you can just hit space and keep scrolling. Of course, just like before, I could pop over here to the file and visit the blob and, and whatnot. Um, so, kind of taking a step back then, what this is just trying to give an idea of what commands um, get covers. Uh, so shaded and magenta, those are things that have the, a transient, like the menu I just showed you for log. Um, the things in gray are, are things that they're supported, but they, they don't, not necessarily through a transient, so get status is of course supported, but through the status buffer. Uh, and then the things, let's see if I can find my point, like grep um, and range diff that are boxed, um, but not colored in. So get grep is very much supported in the sense that there's lots of ways to do it in Emacs, but Magit just doesn't provide another interface for that. And then range diff for, for historical reasons, it's, it's supported, but through a, a Magit extension. Uh, and then that leaves the ones that aren't colored in. A lot of those just aren't particularly interesting to support because they're not used enough. Um, the only one really notable is probably scalar. That's actually, it's, it's not a git subcommand. It's a relatively recent uh, top level command. Its tagline is something like a tool for managing um, large git repositories, which sounds interesting and relevant to this crowd. I've never used it, um, so I can't say much about it. Maybe Magit or probably more likely an extension should, should should support it at some point, um, but yeah, who knows. Um, but yeah, so that's probably the most interesting that is not supported. Okay, so that's a lot of commands. How do you know what's available? Do you need to remember keys for all of those commands? So if I'm back in the status buffer, if I hit question mark, I'm thrown into a dispatch that gives me all of those commands, tells me what my, my keys are. Um, so you, so if, you're, if you're just getting started or if there's some command you don't use that much, you don't remember the key, uh, this transient is, is a good entry point for it. So you know, you'll see a lot of things you use every day there, uh, branch, diff, fetch. So like say I wanted to run diff, then I can just hit D and I'm thrown into that transient. Looks a lot like the log transient we just saw. Okay, um, so everything I've done at this point has been inspecting, so let me start to modify. I'll check out a branch by B, and then I'll hit, so that's the branch transient C to get to the new branch, and then, uh, yeah, let's just call it topic one. Oops, I don't remember now how to use this. Uh, main, and then I'll call it topic one, and then uh, we are now on, a, on another branch. Um, and so let me start to make some changes so I can do something with them. So let's say I'm in this file. Um, let's see, I'll add some noise at the top, just white space. Let me search for this co comment by Michael. Uh, he claims he wasn't confident. That seems unlike him. So I will change that to now. Uh, can get rid of that. 
And uh, yeah, let's see, let's also fix up that indentation. Okay, so that's one file changes. Uh, and here, let's just add some more exclamation marks. Okay, so now we have changes. Um, so if we wanted to stage everything, capital S, just stages everything, can unstage with capital U. If we wanna do it more piecemeal, I can move the file, and as I said, S was for staging. If you're on the file and you just press S, then you're gonna stage that file. Now, if I go down here, it'll be in the stage section. I can commit with a C. This is, gives you options for committing, but default's fine here. Um, commit with C, you're thrown into a commit buffer. Uh, and then, yeah, you can do a body if it makes sense, and exit with Control-C, Control-C. And so now I have that, that recent commits section is, is replaced by commits that aren't yet in main. So this just kind of is tracking your series. Um, let me really quick, I'll stash these and I'll make a, I'll check out main and I'll make one more commit so that you see what it looks like when main has a commit that's, um, that's not in. So I'm just making an empty commit. I'll pop back to topic. And so now you get this section that says unpooled from main. So yeah, just it tracks what's in your upstream that's not in yours. So, so again, it's, it's basically what you'd see if you run a get status, right? But just kind of laid out with all the commits. Okay. Let me pop that stash. Okay, we're back here. Um, so if I want to then stage hunks within a file, uh, how, how do I do that? From the command line, you do something like what? Get add p, say, ah, no, I don't want that, no. Yeah, I want this, but I want something in it, so you s to split, ah, okay, this is what I want, I don't want anything else, q. Uh, is pretty much how you would do it from the command line. And then, so let me undo it. So now we have state, that stage, but let me undo that. And so from the git, how you would do it is, you'd go to the line you want to stage, you hit, uh, control space to start defining the region, move a bit to define, so you just highlight what you want to stage, you hit S, and uh, now you've staged it. So a bit, arguably a bit more streamlined than what you would do with git add dash P. Um, so then I can commit that CC again. I'll commit that, okay, and then, so now I have another commit. Oh, I just realized I made a typo. If you make a typo in the tip commit, control C, then, uh, there's this reword variant and just pop you right back to the buffer, f fix it, and then control C. Um, so that, that's for if you have a tip commit, an easy way to just kind of reword it. Um, all right, let me commit the, the rest of this. Let me say I, I don't want these changes, so I'll hit K to discard them, and then I'll commit the rest of these. Oops, not all of them. Uh, let's see. Anyways, okay. Okay, so um, now I have uh, now I have a uh, a series. Um, but let's say I I realize that I want to reword something a bit farther back. Um, so I showed you how you amend the uh, reword the tip commit. But if you want to go deeper back. Um, you, you say you, we want to reword this. One way to do it, which would be kind of what you do from the command line, you can do an interactive rebase. So I can hit R, pull up the rebase transient, hit I, that's gonna throw me into interactive rebase. I could pick reword and, and then reword the commit. So this is the to-do list you'd see from the command line if you're used to editing series like this. Let me hit Control K to cancel that uh, because I'll show you how a quicker way to do it from the git. So, Instead of doing that interactive rebase, I can just hit W for reword, and then it's just gonna throw me right into the commit message buffer, uh, and I can reword it as I want, control C, control C to get out of it. So it streamlines it a bit, right? I don't need to deal with that to-do list. I can if I need to, I can do a standard rebase, but I, I, but I don't have to. Um, okay, um, and let's see, so, the, the other thing is if you're working on a series, a lot of times you'll make a cleanup commit and ah, that should have actually been in the pre previous commit. Um, so from the command line, um, let's see where, uh, let's get a view of where we are. 
Oops, not my password, please. I can't type when I'm doing demos. Okay, so this is our, our series, and, and so say I, um, I change this file, I add some exclamation marks to it, I can run. Okay, so now if I wanted to fix up, then I, I, from the command line I'd do something like, uh, let me just search for it so I don't get it wrong. Um, but I could do something like this. This would, you know, add that file I just changed, and it says I want to fix up to this third commit here. Uh, now if we look at the log, it's got kind of this special markup fix up that will tell git rebase auto squash, okay, let's, uh, combine that commit and replace this first commit with the combination, a commit that's now the combination, and then, yeah, I can do an auto squash and pops me into the editor and then there I am um, from, from the, uh, okay, so that's it from the command line. You could do the same thing from a git, um, but uh, it's a little, you can also use a more streamlined variant for, that's called instant fix up. So let's say I wanna make some more changes. So I wanna align this and, and then, okay, uh, actually I don't want this white space to change, so let me discard that. Okay, so now I have more changes. Again, I could do what I just showed from the terminal. I do control C and if I pressed F, it would prompt me for a commit and then I'd make that special fix up commit that would then be squashed down. But I can just do it instantly. So if I press F, capital F, that's instant fix up, pops me into a buffer, says what commit do you wanna like, absorb this into, I pick the commit and that's done. So there's no extra rebase, or there's no extra commit and then an extra rebase step. It's just, yeah, what commit do you want to bring it into? All right, uh, how am I with time? I forgot when I started. Oh, okay, there you go. Um, all right, so I will show one, one more kind of streamlined variant. Um, so. Say you have this current state. Uh, I have this D commit and topic, and I don't really want it there. I decided I actually want it on its own branch on top of main. So basically, I, I want this state. So f the way I would do this from the command line, I would, I would check out topic two, I'd cherry pick D, then I'd check out topic one, then I'd rebase topic one to remove D, and then I get, get what I want. So there's, there's some variants in Maget that kind of do this for you. So let's say, okay. So say to kind of map that cartoon onto this, say I wanna get rid of the more confident commit. I want that on its own topic two on top of main. So I, I hit A, uh, a capital A to pull up the cherry pick um, menu. There's an apply elsewhere. There's spin out and spin off that kind of do what the situation I'm describing. Uh, the difference is that uh, spin off will check out the new branch, spin out won't. Um, so we want the spin off or spin out one. I'll press N. Uh, or actually, let me move to the commit I want to actually extract. Yeah, so capital A, I press N. And then I say, okay, yeah, this is the commit I want. Where do you want to um, put it? I want to put it on top of main, call that topic two, and then it does it for you, right? There's topic two, more confident is no longer in topic one. And if we look at what Git or what Maget ran underneath, we can pull up a status buffer, and we see that pretty much does the sequence of commands I outlined. Um, so it just, yeah, makes a new branch and, and does all that for you. Um, so just one of example of how like it can, can streamline things. Right, uh, so to recap, um, Legit is all about working uh, on actionable output that's in the buffer before, like in front of you. Um, you can you can drive Git commands with uh, short key sequences, even commands that are pretty tailored and and re relatively uh, complicated. Um, it provides you with a discoverable interface for all of this. You don't need to remember what all those keys are. Um, provides good coverage of Git commands. Um, but it's not just a mapping between the command line and the Git. It, it provides new functionality and, and workflows. Um, right. Uh, so as a closing thought, you may be thinking, well, that's all. Some of that's cool, and but I'm never going to use Emacs. I, I like my editor perfectly fine. Thank you. Um, 
and that's fine. Um, I, I, I should mention that uh, there are quite a few um, Magit inspired tools. Um, Magit even has a wiki that lists some of them. So uh, perhaps there's one that's a good fit for your workflow and at least does some of this. Um, and, and more generally, uh, it, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it might be useful to look at, at how the Git does things, in particular how it manages to map a very complicated Git interface onto a, a set of interactive commands. Uh, and, and even if you're not in Emacs, uh, maybe that provides some uh, ideas uh, for, for the next interface that you create. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kyle. I think we can segue directly into the panel discussion, so I'll invite 